Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Uh, I will try to explain lead to cash from Salesforce ecosystem. Typically, if uh, uh, there is a program where entire lead to cash implementation is happening across Salesforce and ecosystems, what are the different uh, capabilities Salesforce has, where Aptos fits in, where Aptos role starts, and uh, 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 how the other downstream systems are, right? It's a just, uh, I will try to give it a very simple use case with that we will try to discuss. But as we know, right, this is a very vast area, definitely each one topic which we I will try to touch base uh, in this discussion itself is a huge. But the, but the intent of this uh, of 10, 15 minutes discussion going forward is like at least we need to know that what are the typical terminologies that we are using it in uh, lead to cash process in Aptos projects. So, as name indicates, uh, lead to cash, lead to cash, a very simple definition. If I will start with, uh, if the whole journey starts with, uh, uh, I mean, so let's take a simple example of a product launch. So, let's say iPhone, right? Or if Apple wants to launch a new version of its mobile phone. Typically, as a manufacturer, what I will do as a company, I will first try to propagate this and make a, I will say, a noise in the market, in the, in the community that uh, something is coming new and that is where the advertisement comes into the picture. It's all comes from the marketing cloud, right, to generate prospects and leads across the market. So, this is just a typical transformation and this, this slide is basically an illustration of how the different uh, uh, modules of Salesforce and ecosystems are overlapping each other in this entire life cycle of lead to cash. So first of all, uh, in Mark, we know right that Salesforce has a multiple different, different clouds for specific needs. So journey starts typically with where in a lead to cash where we are doing the whole implementation Cross Salesforce ecosystem, it will start with your marketing cloud. Now, if you uh, see here, I have just mentioned some of the tool uh, in marketing cloud Salesforce. There is a tool which is another acquisition of a Salesforce, which is called as a Pardot. Now, before discussing that, uh, just to clarify that right, that this B after CPQ or any CPQ which we are talking about, Oracle CPQ, Salesforce CPQ, any such CPQs, these CPQs are basically meant to solve what type of business problem. So typically these types of tools are meant to solve the problems which are B2B business nature. So basically business to business. Right. So whatever implementation we are going to do as a as a solution partner, we are going to build this solution for their internal sales reps, sales teams, right? Or account team, order team, whatever, right? But it is for them and their partners. Maximum you can expose it to the partner community portal and all. But this is not for the in customers because that is where the commerce cloud comes into the picture. The typical example is the e-commerce sites which we are using typically. That business model is nothing but a B2C business model where business is directly selling the goods to their in customers. But this which we are going to talk about all the use cases where you will see that everywhere the sales reps comes in. Right, so this tool which is going to solve the problem of B2B business model where service provider or manufacturer is nothing but a company or an individual service provider which is going to offer their service to the another entity. So <clears throat> simple use case is let's say if, uh, uh, I am owning one let's say IT company and uh, I have 100 of employees or 200 employees so definitely I need laptop, desktop right for them to work on so i cannot go as a company i will not go and open amazon and add 300 400 laptops right in a cart even amazon will not allow you me to do that so typically in that case i will reach out to other companies sales team 
so let's say dell hp mac apple right any any such companies lenovo and they are sales team will start connecting to my it team to discuss all the requirements and all that right? that is typically happens in b2b scenario and that is what even actus is is basically going to solve that problem of whole sales cycle right now coming back to this example where i am talking uh, uh, once uh, as a company i have decided okay after 6 months let's say down the line i am going to launch a company or sorry a, a one product let's say iphone 15 is i'm planning to launch so as a company i will invest certain amount of money in in marketing right and in order to drive that what is happening to my promotions the output how or many prospects are coming in and all typically uh, there is if i will talk there are other tools also right adobe also has the marketing cloud which is one of the competitor of salesforce but since we are talking about the salesforce so here you have a part dot this tool basically helps to track all the prospect across different social media or you are going to any site so we we are now experiencing it right moment you search anything right now you and then open any any facebook insta anywhere right youtube you will start seeing that ad is started popping up so basically it's all about the tracking they, they are tracking the cookies and every single things and they uh, even the pardot has those capability i mean pardot can generate the the uh, tracking codes which if i will put it on my site and if you are coming to that site they will track each i uh, means your location you how duration i uh, means how how much time you have spent on that page every single details they will have it and they will capture here in the in the system and based on those certain rules right they will decide okay this guy or this company is really interested or really looking for something which we are planning to launch now it's a whole uh, learning process i'm just giving a glimpse of it right uh, because of course we can't discuss each tools in a detail so typically here all the prospects comes in and once they will based on their rules configurations whatever they have defined business criteria if certain prospects qualify those criteria those will comes under a sales cloud under a sales force which is nothing but lead now this is one way of coming lead in salesforce right there are there are different i mean more than 10 or 20 different methods to uh, you know to generate a lead and bring it in sales cloud right it's not just the one method through part of there are many other ways which through which the leads can comes in inside this and 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 that is where the lead is basically overlap between marketing cloud and your sales cloud so once your leads are basically let's say is there in the sales cloud now this is the time your sales team or the company sales team will trying reaching out to those folks because before that in marketing cloud they will really not getting in, involved and discussing one on one right they will try to only reach out through emails through sms uh, or through different uh, 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 source case or this and that right but when the leads comes in salesforce that is where salesforce will start calling them sending their the personal uh, specific emails to talk and to have a discussion with them and it may happen right out of let's say 1000 leads only 2 or 300 is really interested rates 700s are still not decided to go with and buy the product so those 700s uh, in sales cloud some companies will not delete the data because those are the actual data so they will mark those leads as a cold or they have created some archive mechanism to add, retrieve the data put it somewhere and delete it from salesforce because even salesforce uh, the space is very costly right and nowadays for the enterprise skill companies this is one of the another operating cost nowadays so they are basically adding, having the tool called backup tool and all right to take the data and, and release the data from salesforce i'm just so this is again uh, for the large companies for small scale companies they can easily survive with unlimited additions it's a basically good amount of space is there so out of let's say 300 leads who are really interested in it so as a sales rep what they will do they will go and convert those leads 
into opportunity, account, and contact. And these all things are happening in your sales cloud only. Till opportunity is all your sales cloud. Right? So though that lead becomes a prospect customer now. Why it's still prospect? Because we haven't placed any order. This is the first time just that lead is converted into an account. Now while converting it in Salesforce, there is also an option that if you want to exist with, uh, you know, just attach this lead with any existing account, that also you can do. But at least every time whenever you are trying to convert a lead, a new opportunity will be created. So that opportunity is there in, in now Salesforce under the sales cloud. But here is the next problem comes. The problem is now as a, let's say as a company, since I again, I'm giving the same example. As an IT company, I need 200 laptops. So, okay, I, I let's say I'm discussing with Dell sales reps, sales team, and I said, okay, I'm fine. Can you give me the quotation? I want to see the best price. I want condition how you guys are going to offer the support services what parts you are basically offering us and ultimately the price so that mechanism uh, if you see that still Salesforce in sales cloud was missing even today they have created code quote line atom object standard object if you go and see that they had it but it's not that complete mature just this is object they have created so that is the gap actually after opportunity uh, as a in sales cloud i can do bunch of things related to forecasting uh, opportunities but there are multiple things are there but there is no way to do the product configurations handling a uh, different product scenarios pricing scenarios and then based on that generate a quote and generate uh, that quote into document and send it to the customer right that piece was missing so in this game actually the the first big machine came into picture right as i said in my introduction that was the first cpq project i did around nine years back if i'm not wrong but but there were multiple problems with big machine because big machine was not 100% uh, uh, compatible with salesforce uh, like it is not completely installed on the same platform it's a separate system and there is an integration so you need to know a different language in order to understand and all configuration there are multiple things are there but the problem was that was the only uh, i will say solution available at that time so big machine was a hit actually but later oracle acquired it they renamed it as oracle cpq and at the at the same time or before sometimes actually aptus came into the market and this is the first solution i will say which is so matured and 100% salesforce platform compatible so in order to learn aptus you need not learn a new language you did not learn the different basic of salesforce if you if you are a salesforce admin if you know the platform it is nothing you will not feel even that you are going to one application you are jumping from one application to another application that feeling is also not there and most importantly the database so aptus itself they don't have any database where they are storing any data it's all resides inside salesforce so sales inside salesforce once we install the package it will create the custom objects custom fields within the org and they are using that org storage only to store the data so other other concern for most of the clients were about the security the data breach and all who will take care of it and do they really rely on the third party in terms of security that issue was also gone actually because aptus is not storing any data anyway it's all residing inside the salesforce so if you are using salesforce that's fine or else if you have any queries go and reach out to sales for data security and another thing as a company i need not have to onboard two teams one is for salesforce one is for aptus of course there is a learning curve where you need to know how about the package but the basic fundamental language or configuration stuffs it's the way we are doing it on salesforce it is going to be the same now typically here as a cpq right aptus comes and and we using aptus 
I, as a sales rep, I can go and add those laptops with a 200 quantity. I can go and choose the configurations as per the client requirement. I need this processor, that hard disk, that screen and all and all, right? And based on that configuration, the pricing will happen on the cart itself dynamically. I can create a bunch of rules also. Let's say with this laptop, this power adapter should not be added because this is not supported, right? So I can, sales rep do not need to remember all those things. It's already, as an admin, you have to configure those rules. And as a sales rep, my life will be easy because everything system is taking care of it. All I have to go and select the product which client is asking. All the limitations, auto inclusions, every single thing, pricing, discounting, all things will happen automatically. Now, when I'm saying automatically, which means as an admin or solution provider, you have to configure those rules behind the scene. That is what the Aptos project is all about. Two, so project will be divided into two parts. One is called as a master data setup or configurational setup and second is the transactions or transactional setup or transaction data. So as an admin, you will one team typically in the big implementation I'm saying where there is a dedicated team for product and pricing, dedicated team for coding, approvals, all and all. But these are the parts of the project. So what we have to do first is first we have to go and of course go and configure product, uh, um, uh, add whatever the rules uh, for the for the pricings, go and configure each and everything as an admin. So that when as a sales rep I am coming and adding that product, particular product, all things, all logic, all rule will run and I will get the correct price. That is one part of the project implementation and second part of the project implementation is while I'm doing that there are of course sales reps their main ask is to reduce my coding time. That is the core or I will say the main ask from the business in any CPQ implementation and that is why they are going towards modernization where they are saying that I want my coding time, average coding times needs to reduce as well as the manual works needs to be reduced to avoid any manual error, right? So let's automate as much as possible. But we all know, right, that Salesforce runs is a, is a multi-tenant architecture, so it, it has a bunch of governor limits also, so which we will talk about it, do and don'ts and all, but the, that's a primary objective, right, of any project implementation. So that is the second part of the project that you, as a team, you have to implement all the sort of automations, let's say, when I'm creating a code, I'm simple example I'm saying, right? When I'm, when I'm creating a code, I want all the account information, opportunity information should be auto-populated on code record so that I do not go and manually populate it. Very basic requirement which you will find it in most of the projects, right? So some fields, let's say packages itself is pulling and putting on the code, some they are, a package is not doing, that is where you as a developer or admin, you have to go and write a trigger or flow something to automate it. So this comes as a transactional uh, setups that, or the development that you have to do, which we typically calling as a coding life cycle. And second phase or the first phase I will say, which is nothing but the product and pricing management plus rules management. So which we will talk about it. So as a C, with CPQ, what we did here, what we are trying to achieve, we can send one quotation to the customer. Now, after seeing that, and that is where the CPQ comes, configure price and quoting. So once you will give it that quotation to the customer, customer either accept it, reject it, or they may say that, okay, I need a different variations to it. Negotiations will happen. Unless client accept it, your quote is not going to become an order. So once let's say client accept it, sign the document, then you are basically changing or converting the quote into an order, order line item, right? And now that is the point where most of the times your integration comes into the picture. Some projects, why I'm saying most of the time, because some projects are also, even you know their order management is a different system. So they do not really going and creating order and order line item in Aptos. So they are integrating their systems directly with the code and code line item. But some, not all, 
right so but in general the basic uh, i will say or generic behavior which i have seen in many projects that order as order is keep creating it in aptus only and from order from that point of time your integration comes into the picture for sending those order and order line item informations to downstream system to your billing system where in billing invoicing will happen then the then the revrex system if the same erp system is going to do all those things well and good but nowadays for every single things right in the cloud application there is a dedicated application is there so let's say uh, for for billing there is a tool zora is there even salesforce has a salesforce billing tool in the salesforce ecosystem if i am talking about then just for revrex there are specialized tools are there but regardless which systems in the downstream of course right you need an integration to send that information because your aptus cpq is a source of truth because since order is coming over here and from order and order line item your fulfillment systems provisioning systems billing systems revrex and then the finance and sales compensation is there then that sales compensation or, or other stuff will come where on in finance where typically we used to manage general ledgers right uh, <clears throat> and of course the taxing system right that will typically connected with your billing systems to calculate the tax now some projects which i did not many but two three projects which i did where client task was that to to integrate the inti tax engine with a court object not with the billing why they want to give the estimated tax some of the times right when we are asking for a quotation you will see that there is a a, a special section they have mentioned estimated tax right um, so in order to drive that of course i have to connect my tax engine uh, because salesforce cpq does not have tax engine okay so it's going to be let's say avalara what tax right these are the tools two tools typically i worked with uh, um, which are integrated and nowadays for avalara and others they have the connectors also which which using that you can easily connect with salesforce to send the data so it's a two way connector is there by the way but regardless in general normally the taxes are basically calculating it in the billing systems once the order amount coming there then based on the legal entity uh some companies are saying okay calculate the tax based on the sold to account some will say or some companies norm says no go and do at bill to account level calculate the tax and all some companies are saying no go and calculate the tax based on the ship to account or ship to address actually so those are again we i mean as a cpq team we are not really bother about it we as what we have to bother is that send those all information why we are talking about it because you as a salesforce um, developer i will say or a architect or as an aptus architect your role is very crucial why because you have to make sure that these all systems are getting all the required informations from aptus order order and order line item and where the informations will come of course may i may have to create some fields on the code which will goes to order or directly order team is coming and populating it so it's a complete life cycle which we will discuss definitely during the quoting uh, quoting section right in details actually but integration layer right so sometimes question is like okay what typical integrations uh, a tool which we are using so if i will talk in salesforce ecosystem so mulesoft is there which was acquired by salesforce and they renamed it as an integration cloud that is also widely used but other than that etl tools are like mostly like suppose there is a dell bhumi tool talent is there um and mulesoft is there right these are two three tools which are very popular tool but any other tool can be used as a middleware of course and now there are sometimes the question is okay if i do not have middleware what i will do? so it's a pure salesforce by the way right i mean integration you should not worry about it as a as a cpq uh, resource your worry is that you have to talk to billing team you have to talk to uh, provisioning team you have to talk to shipping 
uh, a warehouse team, all different teams you have to talk to, discuss what information they need and what are the fields that are available which you can map and give it to the integration team. Right? That is why in Salesforce CPQ order management team itself has a very big rule depending upon how many systems uh, this Salesforce uh, is talking to. Now, after that, once the, I mean, just to complete the cycle, right, once let's say order is, uh, order is created, that order will goes to the fulfillment system. If it is a license based product, mostly the provisioning system will then and there, you know, generate the license key and send it that license key to the customer. If it is a service based, so let's say professional services. So there might be, I mean, again in Salesforce ecosystem, that is something called field service lightning, which will basically manage the uh, worker allocations and all and all, right? Uh, like which location you need a service, how many hours that uh, technician was there, what type of technician you need, what is the skill set, all those things are there in the field service lightning. So based on the order product and what type of professional service I'm looking at, Based on that, uh, you know, those things will happen or else if that is not there, then service cloud will be there, right? So if I am selling any hardware product and along with that, if I am selling any support. So the case management basically, right, where, uh, you know, if I have any issue, I can call customer support and talk about, okay, this is my serial number of the product and based on that, they will go and check my entitlements and then uh, uh, the subscriptions and all right and then service cloud basically they have the sales guys will sorry service guys will help me in order to provide the support but once the your product let's say fulfilled which means the shipping or in whatever the mode is your product is fulfilled uh, at that time see some companies are saying no once the order is placed, fulfillment and invoice generation will happen in parallel. They will not stop for fulfillment. Some companies are saying, no, unless your order is not fulfilled, you can't generate the invoice. Right? So it again change. The based on client to client, industry to industry, things will change. But the point is, let's say in, in my case here, let's say your order is fulfilled. Uh, your your all laptops is delivered and now after that you know the billing system will go and raise an invoice after raising the invoice typically again there are a lot many things in the billing also right like okay i mean so what is my billing frequency what is the payment mode and all and all it is going to be one time payment or recurring model payment or there is a split of amount multiple scenarios are there right in the billing system too and that is it's a separate project altogether. So let's say the invoice is generated based on the, all the predefined rules. It will be posted to the customer, uh, the primary contact, which is captured at the opportunity or level only that who to whom to you are talking to. And once the invoice is posted, so that is the point where a uh, client will go, will do the payment, right? Based on the payment term. In between, what what will happen? Your rubric will happen. Revenue recognition, right? Now, revenue recognition is another one of the important factor for any company to check their health pros, like how much revenue they are generated, how much revenue are in pipeline, uh, right? Based on that, they will really see that how the company is doing what. So, rubric generations and rubric recognition uh, can happen in parallel. So again, few companies, most of the now the rules are changed where they are, you know, even the governments are forcing, you no, know, you have to recognize it. Maybe you have to put it in a deferred revenue or on revenue, that's a separate thing. But early days, you know, for some clients saying, you no, know, unless we are not getting payment, do not recognize the revenue, which is now not the case. Only you can hold a revenue recognition till at maximum at a time of fulfillment or you can go and do before fulfillment. Payments are not related to your revenue, revenue recognition, right? Now, in so that is one part. Now, once the payment is has been done by the customer, the payment will be received by the through the payment gateway if it is a digitally payment or through the checks 
uh, you know, all tracks will happen. And finally, the your finance system comes into the picture where typically your journal ledger, company journal ledgers are. And there they will do all the adjustments against, let's say, one laptop cost was $2,000. So I sold that laptop with a $2,000. Of course, that my $2,000 is not the net profit of that company, right? It's a sales figure. And you have already noticed, I believe, because you will see some companies are trying to fake a, just to bump up their share market, that they, they are just flashing the sales figure, right? That, okay, this company sales figures goes from this to this. But it didn't say that this company is really in profit or loss. You might heard some uh, big startups they, where their revenues are in millions and oh, sorry, their sales are in millions, but they are still running in loss. So basically, what is the basic funda? Basic funda is that uh, the cost of operating or cost of production, if I will add all the cost and whatever I am selling actually, if I will do the minus, it is coming in negative. That is where I am in loss. Though I am saying that my sales figures in millions, but doesn't mean that I am in a profit, right? So in this example, let's say that that laptop which I sold of $2,000, let's suppose I have a liability of that laptop is let's say more than $2,000, let's say I'm 21. So liabilities could be of multiple na in nature, right? So liabilities could be of, of course, the raw materials, uh, employees salaries, building rent cost, transportation cost or uh, the different companies liability too, right? So let's say some parts I'm exporting, right? I'm not manufacturing all the parts. Let's say processor I'm buying from another company which has certain cost. I have to clear that also, right? I have to do all the adjustments in my financial book. And let's say out of 2000, let's say my total expenditure is coming 1500 and 1600 so i will adjust it so remaining 400 will be my gross profit and on that gross profit typically based on which in which country that company is operating and doing the uh, uh, the business they have to also give the corporate taxes and all so that they will go and pay and finally whatever is left with is the net profit so if we really want to see which company is doing really great that you can also I mean, there is always a debate. Some people are saying, no, go with this figure, that figure. But actually, company is really doing good. You, their net profit is basically is one of the indicator which will tell you exactly, right, like uh, uh, how this company is doing, <laughs> right? So coming back to CPQ, what happens after order placement is my job is over or the CPQ role is over? So the answer is not yet, right? So typically what type of product I have sold, right? Based on that, uh, 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 based on that, right, the product life cycle will be changed. So Let's say if I have sold a one-time product, which means let's say the laptop. So once I sold that, that product becomes asset to that company, right? Uh, but some products which are in in a proper or after certain duration, right? They have to renew the license of the antivirus or MS Office or Windows, any recurring products, right? So what? how Aptos is maintaining at the end of the day once i sold order let's say tomorrow if client is coming and saying i want to replace this hardware or i want to add 10 more licenses or i want to cancel certain licenses i don't need it so those things will also come as a part of your cpq basically your amendments and renewals right amendments will come any additional quantity so upsell cross sell partial cancellation, full cancellation, swap scenario, all those things will come under the aptus which we will talk about, it, right? So swap scenario could be, let's say, um, if there you have a, let's say, version ABC of antivirus, now you have advanced version of XYZ, right? So as a company, I'm coming and saying, okay, I have paid this, let's swap it with the advanced version, right? Whatever delta price is there, 
So let's say the previous version of my antivirus is of $100 and the latest version is $120 per month. So I can ask them to swap, I will pay the remaining 20, right, and give it my the, uh, the latest one. I do not want to use the old version. So those types of scenarios will come once the, you have placed the order. And typically in CPQ, after CPQ, everything will become as an asset and asset line item actually. There is nothing called subscription record as such. There is nothing called contract as such. Everything is asset. And on the asset itself, there are a bunch of fields which we will talk about it definitely. That will basically, uh, based on that, uh, systems identified that, okay, this is a recurring product or this is a uh, usage product or this is a one-time product, what type of product. So that will be a one life cycle. So starting from the product configuration, coating, then placing the order, and then rest all the downstream systems integration is there. So once every fulfillment and things will happen, the response will come to your after CPQ. Your order is activated. Moment you activated the order, the order line item becomes asset line item. And from then onwards, your one life cycle of that product is completed in CPQ. And then if the customer comes later and asks for, let's say, a any additional quantity or reduction in the quantity or renewal of the product, those all comes again as a part of your after CPQ that is going to be solved by the after CPQ. Okay. So as a Sorry, project. This is Mahu, I can I ask a quick question? Just one quick question. Yeah, so, the amendment yeah, yeah. we're talking about is uh, always on the uh, approved uh, and activated uh, order, right? So I can only Correct. make an amendment on the latest version of the, okay, yeah. Just wanted to yeah. verify. All yes. right. Once your order is activated only, then uh, uh, your assets gets activated. Before that, uh, we'll talk about it, right? There is a setting, mm -hmm. even if you do not want to create asset, uh, before activation, system will not create assets. So there is no asset, so there is no question of amendment. But, yeah. There is another setting which will say, no, go and create the asset, but in draft status. Do not activate those asset lines unless your order is activated. Okay, so moment you will activate, uh, so if your, even your asset is in draft status, you can't take any actions. So basically, in both the cases, unless your order is not activated, you can't do anything. But asset creation, when you want to create that, we can control based on that setting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.